Good morning, y'all. So today is Sunday. It's another off day. Um, I'm here by myself. Well, just me and Evie. Our project today is a third gen forerunner. I gave a hint to my folks on uh, Facebook that um, I just bought a new vehicle. So I just bought this third gen. It is a 2001 this is a sr5 sport so i got it for a really good deal um yeah i got it for a really good deal i don't want to tell you guys how much i paid for it but what is wrong with it is that the transmission is bad so so yeah, I got a transmission for it. And that is what we, or I, will be doing today. Um, Miles might swing by later if I don't get it done by the time he gets off work. <laughs> but it's not really gonna be like a how-to video. Um, I'm just gonna show what I, I'm doing to get the transmission out and stuff. There's plenty of how-to videos on these, how to pull the transmission. So, yeah, I'm not gonna stop and show you every single boat that I have to take off, but. So, 2001, like I said, SR5 Sport. The difference between the, the SR5 and the um, Limited. Limited is leather seat, this is not, it's cloth. And I believe the Limited has like a better audio. I believe it was like the city player and stuff. There's, it has a better one and what you call it? Better speakers and stuff like that. No, little small changes, but overall like dr uh, drive train and stuff like that, they're all the same. Uh, so with it being a 2001, this is, it's kind of like an all wheel drive, kind of like not all wheel drive, it's, it's more like a full time four wheel drive, kind of like how um, Mall Runner is. But this one, I mean, I guess I'll show you guys the shifter. It's kind of confusing because there's not many of these. Uh, most of the third gens that people have, third gen starts for that 2006 and then it goes up to 2006, I mean, not 2006, 96 up to 2000. They're a little bit different. And then this is a 2001 to 2002. They're there's like more, I guess you can say technology to them. So, um, the 96, 2000, they have a J shifter for the full, full wheel drive. This one does not, it's just like an up and down. So there's four low, neutral, and then high. Um, as far as I understand is that you can go into two wheel drive, two wheel drive, well to go in four wheel drive high, you press this button right here, it says 4WD, I believe so, I'm not 100% because there's not enough, that much information on these out, on the interweb, so it's either full time four wheel drive or it's two wheel drive, although it don't say it, and you hit this button to go into four wheel drive. That's what I think, I'm not 100% sure. So the difference between this and the J shifter, J shifter has a two wheel drive option. You can go all the way down, over, and then into two wheel drive. This one will do that, just straight up and down. And then to lock it in four wheel drive, just like the Mar Runner is, there is a button right here for a center differential lock. It's basically like a, it's a transfer case lock. So that's how mall runners set up. Um, there is a knob that is just, it's full wheel drive high and full wheel drive low. And for it to lock into full wheel drive, I hit, I have to hit the center diff lock. Um, there's the advantage and disadvantage of that. Advantage is that I can be, if my center diff is not locked, but I can, 
I can still go into full wheel drive low. That means I like if I'm doing like a switch back, switch back climb or something, I can unlock my transfer case. It'll still be in full wheel drive, but I can turn the front tires a lot easier. So that's the advantage. Um, disadvantage is that I can't do those awesome slide, you know, doing donuts and stuff like that because it's, it's always locked and I can't spin just the rear tires. There's no option for that. But yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. Um, this is how I bought it. I have not cleaned it yet. So it's so pretty dirty. So the idea with this third gen is that the fourth gen is gonna be uh, my wife's daily driver. She's gonna drive to work and we're only gonna use it for like camping and stuff and road trips and then this this third gen is going to be my off-roading rig so that's the plan we'll we'll see oh and then another awesome thing about the um 2001 2002 is that they went away with the traditional uh vacuum brake booster so these they have the uh electric brake booster just like the fourth and fifth gen uh forerunners so with the electrical with the electric brake booster, um, these have a track. A track is uh, Toyota's active traction control system. It's the one where if the tire, like one of the front tire, is spinning, like up in the air and is spinning, it'll apply brakes to that tire and sends power to the other tire. So in a way, it's kind of like a poor man's locker or like a limited slip, and that's how Mar Runner can do the. Um, the, they call it the Toyota wave, you know, where I'm going up like a like a rut or something. And one of the front tires is like all the way up in the air, but I st but I'm still moving forward because A track is doing this thing is applying brakes to that tire that's up in the air, and um, I can continue forward because the tire that does have traction is actually spinning. So that's how that worked. Um, like I said, there's not too much information on these. Um, I just know that it has A track. But um, being an SR5, I believe, there's no like kill switch for it. Just like Mall Runner, Mall Runner's an SR5 also, there's no kill switch for it, meaning you can't turn a track off. You know, there's certain situations where you need to turn it off, but you can't. So it, you end up doing like an aftermarket mod, you know, for Mall Runner, I have a kill switch hooked up to the uh, brake pressure sensor. So when I need to turn a track off, basically I just cut the connection between that on a toggle switch, cut the connection, um, the traction light will, you know, will turn on, and then that disables um, a track. So that's probably that's gonna be something I have to do on here first. Well, have to do on uh, the third gen, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, the most important is just you know I got to get it running first, get it drive on the road because there's no I don't have history on this no it was told in by a customer so there's no backstory other than the transmission is bad I did check it there's a coach for the torque converter lockup solenoid and then this was checked by a different shop um but they dropped the uh, transmission pan there was a bunch of metal in there and with the with the engine running you can hear like clinking sound and stuff in the transmission so that's what we're doing. I already bought one. It got delivered delivered the other day. So that's where we're at. Hi guys.
All right, so, so far I got the transfer case off. Um, there's only one bolt left for the transmission. Once I get the transfer case off the lift, because so when I'm here by myself, this is how I get stuff off of the uh, transmission jack. Is I use the lift itself to pick it up. So that's where I'm at so far. The GoPro keeps overheating. Um, so I ask, I asked about the was it the audio quality and trying to you know get that figured out. So Matt suggesting a windsock on the GoPro, which is this right here. It's like a foam pad that goes around the GoPro. But the issue with having a socket that is that it doesn't it, it renders uh, heat dissipation and the GoPro keeps overheating it'll overheat every like 15 20 minutes so hopefully I capture something um, yeah so this is the DJI Osmo action and that's what I'm gonna be using to continue Yeah, so that's what I have for now. I'm gonna turn my fan off. Yeah, so that's what I, I'm, this is my stopping point. Right now it is uh, almost 12 and it's really hot. Even this camera is starting to overheat. Um, it's like 90 something right now. It's only like 11.45, so it's really freaking hot. Um, yeah, I forgot about the torque converter, how heavy those suckers can be. So I didn't compensate for that. And when I started picking off the uh, um, transmission jack, it tilted forward just a little bit and it leaked some fluid out. So, I mean, it's not a big deal. I already cleaned it up. Um, so this is how it looks like with the transmission removed. That's the engine. Let me grab a flashlight for you guys. Yeah, so this is how it looks like with the with the in transmission remove. Um, this right here, that is a flex plate that attaches to the engine, and then the torque converter bolts onto this with these uh, holes right here. Um, there's six of them. So when the engine's spinning, it spins the torque converter, and the uh, torque converter overall spins the transmission, and that's kind of how you know it transfers fluid or it transfers power. The engine transfers for power through the transmissions through the torque converter and this is the that's a torque converter so that's where I'm at like I said it's almost uh, 12 so I'm gonna run home and have lunch with Tiffany then once I'm done once I'm done I'll come back to the shop and finish this up it should get done today um, yeah, there's a couple of snag that I ran into, like, uh, um, there's a lot of, you know, dirt and road grinds and stuff, so it was hard to see bolts or trying to get sockets on bolts that you can't really see, so it's kind of just what I had to deal with. Um, 
I took out the front sway bars that hooks onto right here. It goes up to the frame, crosses over to this frame, and it hooks down here. The sway bars right there on my cooler. I took that off. I'm not going to be running sway bars on this. And I'll see. I mean, it's probably easier now. I was thinking about waiting until I get a lift kit to take off the rear sway bar, but with the dry shaft off, it's easy. Um, so I think I'm gonna do that today. Get rid of the sway bar. So what I have in mind is that the there is a fifth gen TRD Pro. The I can't remember if it's Fox. I think it's the Bill Stein that comes factory on the TRD Pro on like the fifth gen 4Runners. Um, I found a good deal on one for $300 front and rear. Um, the rear is a remote reservoir. And the fifth gen 4Runner, the spring and the shock on the third gen is actually a stock replacement is two inch lift. So the TRD Pro is usually a little bit taller than like a factory, I don't know, like a SR5 or something. I think it's like an inch and a half, two inch lift. So with that, my what I think is that with the TRD Pro on the third gen, that should be like a three inch lift, roughly, right around there. And like I say, it's three hundred bucks, and it's yeah, it's, and it's like a Bill Stein. Um, I can't remember what version. This is the big one. So there's 5100, there's a 6212, I think. It's a 2.5 body. And then the rear is, I think they call it a 5160 because it has the remote reservoir, the shock. So that's the plan in a way. We'll see how that goes. The guy lives pretty far. Um, he lives in, what's that town called? Glenwood. He lives south of Glenwood and that's like a three hour and 15 minute drive so it's like a you know six and a half hour trip um it's pretty far but he's thinking that he can probably meet me in uh silverthorn probably like Saturday, sunday this coming up weekend so we'll see how that goes if that plan does uh, go through then um that yeah i'm gonna have a cheap lip cheap lift kit on this so my ultimate goal with this vehicle is I'm kind of hesitant about going 35s. I think I'm going to try 33 first and see how the fitment is and you know see how much how how much is struggling. It'll struggle to, you know, roll 33s. If it's not a big deal, then I'll go 35 or I may just skip through that and just go with like 37s or something. But We'll see. I mean, there's a lot of stock axles, so I don't know how that's going to handle with 37s. Um, yeah. All right. Well, it's lunchtime. I'm going to go home and go eat. Outside my window Is everything pale and cold Can't seem to pick up my phone it's been ringing all day long Behind these clouds I know the sun will be But today's raining So be patient with me I'll be right Somehow I must be Somewhere the sky is blue I feel 
All right, so the GoPro keeps overheating. I mean, it got so hot where it was overheating every like freaking 10 minutes. So the transfer case is in, the transmission is in. Uh, I just got done putting the transmission lines up there on. But look, check this out. So it's saying it's 98, it's supposed to be 99 today. And tomorrow's gonna be 101. So it's freaking hot. Um, it looks like the radiator is starting to leak. That might be the problem. This is where the transmission cooler goes into. And over here. So it looks like it could be leaking there and that's that might be why the transmission went bad to begin with. It probably got mixed. Um, but so for right now, because I don't have any history on this vehicle, I'm gonna drive it first and see what it needs. So temporary. This is the uh, transmission cooler lines. They went back up. They go up here to a auxiliary cooler. So I'll bypass the radiator completely. Um, that is a temporary job for the summer. For the summer is fine. Um, that should be more than enough cooling because I'm not planning to tow with this thing. So it should be more than enough cooling for the transmission. But for the, um, for the winter, it'll, it'll be over cooling. So this is just a temporary job. Um, eventually I'm gonna get, what is in my hair? So eventually I'm gonna get a, a bigger transmission cooler with a thermostat uh, built in. Cause this one does not have a thermostat. Not that I can tell. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at. So I got to lower back down, put the shifter and, and all that back together and then I'll fill it up and potentially test drive. So right now it's like five o'clock and Miles get off at seven. He's planning to come by and uh, I'll probably, I should have it ready then. And when he gets here, we'll just, I don't know, take it for a quick test drive, make sure everything's good. I'll uh, make sure the well bearings and all that stuff are, are okay. So yeah, that's where we're at. Evie's been hanging out with me all day and she is dirty. There she, her fire is black. But yeah, so it's 98 degrees. I turn the fan off and it's hotter than hell right now. All right. Yeah, so I lied. This is like the regular uh, four by four because I, when I took the transmission, I'll look at the front differential, and there is a uh, they call it ADD um, auto disconnect for the front axle. So it is like a traditional four wheel drive, but it has like the function of like an all wheel drive kind of. Uh, I'm not sure what the transfer case is, how that's set up is probably like a torsion, like the all wheel drive systems. But yeah, you have to figure that out. 
So right now, if I go to dry, only the rear tire spins. And then do to put into four wheel drive, there's the button. So hit the button. There we go, the light turns on. And then the front tires, this one's not spinning, but there we go. The front spins. And then also there's a button here to lock, to lock the uh, transfer case. And when you lock it, it turns traction control off. There we go. And then shift it back in two wheel drive. And then you gotta roll a little bit. There we go, two wheel drive. It's kind of weird. Um, different than what I'm used to obviously so I'm about to take it for a test drive and see how it goes I'll be back yep so it's been like two days now that I've been driving and everything seems to be working pretty good um yeah so there are some stuff that I'm gonna need to replace kind of like a maintenance deal um <clears throat> was was it the water pump time belt there it is due and like 5,000 miles uh, according to the sticker that is on the timing cover so I got that coming the radiator is leaking so I'm replacing that uh, let's see I'm gonna do the thermostat and stuff while I'm there and then this confirmed my lift kit well the lift kit that I'm getting the TRD Pro lift kit um, the guy is gonna meet me on Sunday so that will be coming uh let's see what else once i get lifted i don't know this is gonna be like a slow progress uh, progress just because a lot of money that's involved you know especially after i just bought this vehicle uh overall so far i have about fifteen hundred dollars into this um so i bought the i bought this vehicle for 550 dollars and then it was a thousand for the transmission so i'm in yeah 1550 bucks and then it was 58 dollars to register it um but yeah so 1600 bucks which is not bad especially when this vehicle as it sits you know with when it's running um it's worth like four or five grand according to the market right now um and that's easy money if you know if you willing to sit on it you i can probably get like six seven for it something like that because this is a sr5 sport um, with the sport, you know, I have the wood trim All these wood trim and stuff and also the sport hood The sport hood has that little hump right there and the hood goes for like 500 bucks by itself, which is crazy but Yeah, so that's all I'm at. Um, I'm gonna end this video here and the upcoming ones will be the maintenance stuff and then eventually the, uh, the lift kit will be done and yeah, it's gonna be fun. Be a slow progress. Cause mall runner, it took me like a a year. Yeah, about a year to get where she is at now. You know, when I first bought her, I think it was like a month or something after I got the lift kit. And then I went to 33 inch tires, but I, I rode 33 inch tires for a good while before I got serious into building mall runner. And yeah. Later guys, adios. Outside my window Is everything pale and cold Can't seem to pick up my phone It's been ringing all day long Behind these clouds I know the sun will be